Nan is the uh, participating Hi. artist of Challenging Times of this exchange program. And he also participated in our current exhibition in Honga Museum right now, the uh, International Video Art Exhibition. Yeah. And we is the coordinator of this project. So she's now based in uh, Jim Thompson Art Center. So we have four of us today. <laughs> and oh, cool. yeah, Yan Yi, she's always somewhere. <laughs> She's either yeah. in Berlin or in Bangkok or in Taipei, always somewhere. But we're, I'm happy that this year she spent more time in Taipei with us. And she just curated the um, digital art festival, Taipei Digital Art Festival. And the topic of the exhibition is love. So I directly think that, okay, so Yan Yi might be very helpful to the topic that Julia Non want to uh, uh, talk about this time. Yeah. And I've already sent the uh, um, presentation you share with, with us to uh, Yan Yi's so she can get a oh, okay. basic idea of uh, what you plan to do through this project. Yeah. And uh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, so last hard. time in the email, I talked to uh, Chulaya Non. Uh, how do we call you? K? What's your nickname? Uh, K. 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 OK. K. So K. K. Yeah. K. Yeah, K. OK. Yeah, K. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So last time I told K that before we start the discussion, I want to briefly, really briefly talk about the um, modern history of Taiwan so that he get to know better about our relationship with Japan. Because mm -hmm. mm, before 19th century, basically the island of Taiwan has no uh, really official of... Sorry? Can you allow me to record this meeting? Yes, I, I didn't. Okay. I, I'm recording right now, but didn't I allow you mm -hmm. to record? I will I will share this later to your Google, Google Doc. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Cause I've did that. Uh, yeah, I've uploaded the meeting we did last week with uh, temp two. Yeah, so no worry, I'm recording right now. So people, okay. mind your mouse if you want to say something. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, so before 19th century, basically there's no uh, such official history of Taiwan because um, Dutch people came and Spanish people came and uh, they didn't really rule the whole island, but they occupy part of it. And... Um, mm. It was until the um, uh, late, 20, uh, late 19th century in 1885, the Qing Empire, the uh, Qing Dynasty, Qing Empire um, declared that uh, Taiwan is a province of Qing Empire. However, um, Qin Empire lose the war and Taiwan become part of Japan in 1895. Uh, so it was only 10 years after Taiwan were declared part of China and then Taiwan were, um, Taiwan became part of Japan from 1895 mm -hmm. to 1945 after World War II. So this 50 years of colonialism basically changed Taiwan's um, uh, modernization because Japanese built the railroad, built schools, built a lot of systems, also introduced the modern uh, uh, medicine and health system into Taiwan by that time. And they also sent a lot of uh, Taiwan soldiers to Southeast Asia as part of their uh, empire. 
And uh, after 45, when mm -hmm. uh, Japan lost the war, um, China declared Taiwan again, they relocate Taiwan. And soon Chinese government, the nationalists and the communists, they start to fight. And Chiang Kai-shek, the nationalist mm -hmm. withdrew to Taiwan in 1949. Also followed him camps around uh, 1.2 million people from China, from different provinces of China mm -hmm. moved to Taiwan. So after that, Taiwan has become quite the uh, com complex of Taiwanese people towards Chinese people and towards Japanese people become very strange because uh, they were weighted for uh, Chinese government to declare Taiwan as part of China so that they don't need to be colonized by Japan. But uh, when uh, Chinese uh, soldiers really came to Taiwan, they are surprised to see that actually Japanese are more disciplined and more civilized than, uh, than Chinese soldiers. So they were surprised. And uh, at the beginning of uh, Chiang Kai-shek uh, government, Taiwanese and Japanese are not allowed to be spoken in school. Students must speak Mandarin Chinese in school. So their dialogue and Japanese were basically forbidden. Yeah. Also, it comes a lot of um, contradictions uh, between uh, Taiwanese people and Chinese people who came to Taiwan after 49. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. until 2000, yeah, it was until 2008, 2002, I guess that uh, Taiwan were Taiwanese were given the uh, the right to elect our own president. So you can see mm. that after the 49, it was uh, around 30 to 40 years of dictatorship by Chiang Kai-shek and his family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, Nowadays, um, Taiwanese government is trying to uh, shift the justice uh, because at the beginning of Chiang Kai-shek generation, he, uh, he is so afraid that people might disobey him. So people who has, uh, he uh, put a lot of people into jail if he suspect them with communist thinkings. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we were talking about the uh, um, movies of relationship between Japanese and Taiwanese. So I think maybe it's uh, good to know that actually a big part of Taiwanese people, they grew up thinking they were Japanese. Uh, people over 80 right now, they basically grow up mm -hmm. within Japanese times. Okay. And the people who grow mm -hmm. up uh, during national governments, during Chiang Kai-shek government, they think they are Chinese. Mm -hmm. And they think they are even more mm -hmm. Chinese than people who are now living on Chinese mainland because they think mm -hmm. they uh, uh, they have the more pure legacy or something. <laughs> and people who grow up mm -hmm. after 90s, after Chiang Kai-shek and his son passed away, uh, like my generation, mm -hmm. we are more thinking ourselves mm. as Taiwanese than Chinese or Japanese. Mm. So you can see the shift of the mindset of the ideology of uh, people from mm. different generations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that is also I why see. when I introduce those uh, movies to you, 
uh, we feel um, the attitudes towards Japanese were uh, changing um, during the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, hope mm -hmm. that helps. Otherwise, we will be um, lost in the history of something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for make the the clear cut of the history, the Taiwanese history. So it's make me understand the political and the historical context mm -hmm. of the Taiwan. So mm -hmm. I think it will be related directly to the media culture in yes. Taiwan, right? Mm -hmm. So from my research now, uh, I saw, yes, some of the film that made before 2000 that shows a, a relationship between like Taiwan and Japan and the Japan, Japanese character in the mm. film before 2000 is, is gonna be like a negative or bad guy. Bad mm. soldier but, or yeah, empire, mm, something yeah. like that. Mm. Yeah, to, to try, try to be colonized mm. uh, Taiwan, but uh, after 2000, the, the film that show relationship between Taiwan and Japan was changed mm, to more like friendly. The Japanese character is more friendly, and the and that is the love story between like. Japanese uh, man and uh, Taiwanese woman. But on the other hand, there are many films that show relationship between Japanese woman and the Taiwanese guy. So there are variety of the love story of the film after 2000. Mm. But uh, from my re research, uh, surprisingly, we I found that the love story between like Taiwanese guy and uh, Japanese woman will be will be made by the Taiwanese director. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the love story between Japanese guy and uh, Taiwanese woman will be made by Japanese director. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, do you think? Mm, really? Do you have some example? But one moment, Yan Yi, I want to let you know that after, after last time we talked with uh, Kay, I sent him some um, movies. And the old ones are Mei Hua, Chun Han, na, the, in the movie of the 70s. So just yeah. Japanese are bad men, and and then very And then I introduced him Hai Jiao the oh, yeah, yeah. number I'm seven. Thinking. So it's totally different. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just want to let you know that. Mm. So Kay is aware of these movies right now. <laughs> okay. oh, cool, cool, cool. Mm, I, yeah. I want to actually yeah, I was working with Hai Jiao Qi Hao people before because you did. They were, yeah, they were they were gonna turn the movie into a musical, like um, because there was a Broadway director from Japan, and he was really appreciating. He he really like gratitude about like how Taiwan like donated so much money during the Fukushima event. Uh... So. And then wanted to do a musical of Hai Jiao Qi Hao as a thank you gift to the Taiwanese people. Yeah. But then, like, Wei Da film failed. Um, 
uh, yeah, the finance didn't work out, so they canceled the whole thing. But I see, yeah, I see. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. 海角七号 for sure. Uh. 海角七号 is Cape number seven. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I haven't seen the film yet, but uh, I just read the synopsis only, and uh, more information uh, when Soe sent me uh, just because um because the film was inspired by the seven letters, right? Yes. Mm. The seven letters between Japanese guy, a uh, Japanese soldier, mm. right? And Japanese uh, soldier and, and the Taiwanese, Taiwanese women. Women, yeah. So, uh, but the film itself is 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 a Swiss Swiss, right? Because mm. uh, the the main character in Cape Seven is. Is a uh, uh, Japanese uh, woman and a uh, Taiwanese guy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the younger so, generation. The younger generation. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I think it's it's. Is still in my field of the re research, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think I have a chance. I, I I should have a chance to see the film, so I can talk more about about this. And uh, okay, for example, the other film that made by Japanese film director and it also about the love story between like uh, Taiwanese women and the Japanese guy is uh, is called in is in English in English is a uh, mom do you mind if I get married with Japanese guy do you know the, this film do you have a link no. or a link, right? Mom, do you uh, mind if I marry? Do you mind if I marry Japanese guy? Let me Google this film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also a new mm. film in 2017. I know this one. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So, I'm not sure. So, I'm not sure. What book are you going to read? The longest, the longest movie title I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Directed by Japanese director Akihi Sayachita. Yeah, it's Japanese. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it was originally a so, book, right? Oh, really? Mm. Mm, and I don't know. Mm. It's a book. Is it? It's, it's a book that by Japanese. Uh, no, it, I think it's a or Taiwanese. No, I think it's a comic book by a Taiwanese girl. Comic book. Oh, okay. Comic book. Mm, mm. I see. Ah. Uh, and the Japanese director um, um, found this comic book interesting and and made it into a uh -huh. movie. Uh huh. I see. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So um, I asked about. Uh, relationship the the per, per, personal relationship mm. with uh my taiwanese friends uh friend and mm. friend friend taiwanese friend and she said that uh, 
Taiwanese woman is not brave to have a Japanese boyfriend or husband? Brave. Because, why? Because uh, my friend, she said, uh, Mm, she said in Taiwan is like the power of of the man or it's like the power of how to say in English we may help me <laughs> it's called pita uh, tipatai pita tipatai it's like it's like uh, it's like Mm, male or the man is is the most important in the society or in the family. So you mean patriarch? Yeah, patriarch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's that's the word. Okay, so okay. Mm, so my my friend she said that uh, in Taiwanese society is a kind of that relationship mm. so the Taiwanese woman is not brave enough to have a foreign uh, boyfriend or husband and on the on the other hand there are, in the internet there are some radical nationalists that they will be like uh, criticize the woman who get married with the international guy that is like it's, it's called CCR is like cross culture romance. Mm. Mm. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it's true or not. What do you think about this issue? I think in general, um... Japanese culture is more patriarchic. That's true <laughs> compared mm. to Taiwan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think not only Japan, the uh, Northeast Asia, like in Korea or in Japan, then they, they're both more uh, patriarchy uh, society. And, uh, but for the younger generation, I mean, um, mm. below 40, um, they also have a term called uh, so shokudanshi. It means that uh, um, people who enjoy eating salmon, green grass. Social good, social good, uh, it veg vegetarian boys. There is a term called vegetarian boys in a current society. It means that a lot of uh, Japanese uh, men they don't like to be, they don't like to get married, and they are tired of relationship, and they also dislike the patriot. A patriarchy culture society because that become a burden to male too. Like father has to uh, earn a lot of money to support the family and to work in the business like with long hours because you uh, you have to, you are the only uh, financial you are the only income in the family. They also dislike this character. Yeah. So I think um, mm. men are uh, is not the only um, is not the only one who dislikes this whole system. Yeah, in current society. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see. But I do mm. have a lot of friends, like Japanese girls, married Taiwanese guy. I know. I know oh. two artists. Mm. Taiwanese artist married mm. Japanese uh, wife. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. 
，袁老师，<笑>嗯，广明恩的，姚仲涵也是啊。哦、oh, ，OK， 哎、嗯，看到姚仲涵也是 ，OK，Yeah，I、okay. I definitely think like cross cultural romance is is a term、嗯。Like from the internet, especially on the, we have this huge forum called PTT, and、um, it's a, it's a very like it's a very early computer format, and、um, probably no one uses it、um, in the rest of the world now. But then, like in Taiwan,、uh, we still use it. it. It's because it's really stable and uses like、uh, Taiwan National Taiwan University's academic website.、Uh, Internet, so it's、uh, it's widely used among the students, and then a lot of people who graduated still continue to use that. And cross cultural romance, usually, I think it's it's、um, targeted at、um, Taiwanese women who only dates like white male.、Um, uh. Not so much as、uh, criticizing Japanese male, to my understanding, but then like. Yeah, like they they really, it's it's becoming a little bit like、um, uh, a misogynist、uh, group. They would、um, they would actually it kind of like shows how much they feel they were、um, they were suppressed and they were discriminated by Taiwanese women because they prefer the Western men and、um, no matter like how terrible these Western men are, they can always get like. Taiwanese girlfriend, so so it's a it's a it's a term that's that's getting it was pretty neutral, but then afterwards it's become quite negative, and、um, people wanted to label those women who date、um, white guys as CCR as some sort of insult. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. I see. I don't、mm. I don't feel so much negativity towards. Um, people date Japanese guy though, like yeah, I or see, Korean. I see. Yeah.、Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I I would like to know more about your uh, uh, cultural practice in the exhibition. Could you explain a bit more? Yeah,、mm. sure. Um, so, so the digital art festival this year we started to、uh, we started with two curator. The other one is a director of digital art center, and we、uh, we started to talk about the、uh, phenomenon of people using dating apps、um, because、uh, there are a lot of different stories and that we heard from our friends. And then you know, there's a lot of、um, There's a lot of Instagram accounts, or、uh, even just on App Store, you can see people sharing their love stories on Tinder's, you know, like a download page, and or like OkCupid down, download page. And then there's a lot of discussion、uh, shows, podcasts talking about modern relationships in the age of、um, mobile apps, basically. So then we started. We both have like experience of using the dating apps, and、um, we have like very mixed feeling about it. So we started to research whether or not、uh, dating app has changed the way we think about and、uh, and the way we, you know, like understand relationships. So、um, yeah, so we started to talk about like from different aspects.、Uh, we talked about like. Um, the the way we start how how does the interface design、uh, affect us to select our partner? What kind of algorithm is behind the dating apps、uh, in order for them to suggest us to you know like meet people?、Um, and and also like what that does that brings us in the、um, in the society where we have you know like unlimited choices and we have unlimited Matches to choose from, and does that really help us to、uh, to find the one we love, or does that just make us kind of like sinking in、um, with more choices? So,、um, so the curatorial、um, research started, and we started to found out that 
okay, yes, the concept of love uh, does not change, but well, the concept of love has been like always changing, for example, but then like it does not change just because they, dating apps uh, emerge. But what changes is that um, our attitude towards, um, towards love and relationships and our patience and our energy that we willing to invest it in um, uh, to maintain certain relationship or uh, to get to know other people. And we also found out that uh, through different researches, we found out that actually every dating apps is trying to, um, is trying to, you know, like they're trying to make money and uh, engagement uh, is always their top priority instead of actually uh, matching. So on the PR, they said um, their, their goal is to find you a, an ultimate match. But what they really want is to get you engaged with the app longer and then engage with the apps uh, more multiple times in a day. And also like always interacting with the app. So that um, you, people, you draw in more other, uh, more people so that they can have user growth. So, um, so user growth and um, uh, engagement uh, are, and also like this like commercial advertisement model actually now dominates uh, the, those dating apps mechanism. So when they design the dating apps, they don't actually put, um, it's not their priority to help us find the best one. It's, it's for them, it's more, most important is that we keep using the app. Um, yeah, and then we also found out that there's a lot of other business going around uh, the dating services as well. Um, for example, uh, a lot of dating apps sells users information to, to third parties um, to, for anal analyzation or for business purposes. Um, it's, it's actually legal because when, whenever we accept or log into the dating apps, we have to accept the terms and conditions without the ability to change or modify any part of it. So it's legal for them to packaging whole data of um, certain group of people and just like resell it. And nobody can have any interference of that afterwards. And the second of that is um, the surveillance capitalism actually really influenced the um, influence the way that uh, dating apps is seeing its users. So that really puts us down and that really put the human being status, um, you know, not as, as important, like our marital status, like the st startup is no longer wanted to create a new scenario for a human. They wanted to create like more capital for themselves, basically. Um, so, so these are the economic economic background that we realized uh, during the research. And then after, after we research about like people's uh, exchange of the messages, uh, we also found out that uh, more and more abuse messages and non-consensual sex messages were received on online basically. So in a way that we get to, we do get to meet more people, but we also have more unpleasant experience online. Um, we are also in, have to engage in a lot of like meaningless uh, conversation, uh, even though it appears to us that, oh, we have like more chance to meet people. So, uh, but then we all have only limited amount of time. So that became like, you have to have um, a mechanism to help you to say yes and no. And um, there's, a, there's some articles that I find really interesting. It's called Tinderizations of Feelings. Uh, so it's like basically um, we have to nowadays living this world, we're not only just applying this like Tinder mechanism, like yes to the right, no to the left, logic to uh, when we selecting partners or selecting the dates that we wanted to go out with. Um, we also ap apply this feeling to many other things as well. So um, we're just like, oh yeah, hell yeah, or hell no, something like that. 
Um, so I, we think that really influence our behavior. Um, there also within the structure of gig economy, uh, precarious life uh, style, everyone is having uh, more and more people are becoming like a, a project based worker. Uh, you don't have um, you don't have like you know like insurance uh, health insurance for a long time for long term or labor insurance for a long term you are you have to be on your own and there's a lot of jobs that are created um, because of gig economy so it's kind of like you have to work like your, your, for example, maybe your primary job does not necessarily sustain your whole life liquid. And you have to take part-time jobs like driving an Uber or deliver food in order to make some extra money to make your ends meet or to fulfill your desires. Um, so in this scenario, we don't have that much time. Basically a lot of these uh, jobs are not, are like time consumed, like time payment wise job. It's not something that you can, you know, like you can gain more experience or you can gain more technique um, throughout the time that you, you know, deliver food. You're not gonna, it's like, it's like, it's like you're not gonna get better. It's not like, um, yeah, it's hardly for them to give you like a training, like to make sure you do better. So it's, it's only amount of time, uh, the matter of time. And so, with limited amount of time that we have to do all these kind of jobs. And also on top of that, with all this information flows, we have to uh, constantly screening and like accepting a lot of different pop-up ads, um, different kind of news, notifications, bombarded our lives, uh, taking away, uh, trying to get our attentions, uh, taking away one or two seconds of our life um, just to be, um, just to get our attentions. We, do we have enough time to maintain and to really know ourselves or um, really get to know other people and um, try to make things or like talk about things or experience things through time and then forming your own opinion. Um, we think that's, that's, the, that's the biggest uh, issue with arguments we propose in the exhibition that, um, yeah, it's like we we all we all like wanting to love and having relationship then it just doesn't feel right like somehow we have a lot of love and affairs with a lot of one night stands but then it doesn't feel right and why is not so basically that's the whole territorial questions that we are trying to engage in and, hmm. and what 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 is the the response the response of um, and yeah from from the audience or from the yeah yeah um, but the response from the audience is that um i find um because it's it's also another another issue uh, well another perspective is that um, not a lot of topics on um, in the art um, in the art scene before. Uh, somehow, like recently, has like three or four exhibitions talking about this like love and relationship, but it's mostly Asian in a larger scale, like society love for the society, the love for a nation. Um, Things like that, or like um, your unpaid labor as a liquidization of love. That's uh, also uh, another topic that other exhibition was trying to talk about in Taiwanese society. But in this specific exhibitions, um, we find that like people were just were really um, they were really like they were, in general they started to notice more about the mechanism behind the um, the social media well the dating apps and the the part they were really uh, trying to ask is that um, like how can we how can we get off this like what are the strategies can the artists offer or like 
what are the other possibilities for us to meet other people. So um, the response is, I guess like everyone was really, like they, they were documenting the curatorial statements a lot. And they said like, they, they wanted to think about it, but then like, it's, it's somehow like really hard to get away from it as well. Um, Cause we didn't really, we didn't really give them like a step-by-step -step advice to be like, oh, you should engage with your parents more, like understand your family background and stuff like that. We didn't do that. So, so I feel like um, in general, the, audi the audience feels like, okay, they should, they're, they're really like, um, uh, understand the point of view and they started to pay more, more attention to the, the mechanism behind these apps. At the same time, they are starting to question uh, what does it mean like in nowadays, like do, do I like enjoy more options or do I enjoy, um, do, do I enjoy just living like this or do I enjoy actually engage with person that I love more. So, so that's like the general of uh, response that I get. Um, one of the artists dis really disagree with our arguments, actually. He thinks that, uh, he thinks that like dating app doesn't change anything. Uh, it doesn't, it just kind of like uh, gave us new way to meet people, but then um, it does not change relationships and um, it does not change our, um, yeah, our way to deal with each other, like our way to communicate with other people. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, um, that's some of the response I have right now in my mind. Yeah, I think. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. But uh, if, if, if I would like to know more about the app, is possible? Because, uh, or the app is only in, in Taiwanese? Oh. No, in, in English. In English. Mm. Yeah, I'll send, you, I'll send you the link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any uh, dating app? in Thai that is popular recently? Mm, Tinder? I don't think in Tinder, right? Tinder. And then it's the, the same one. Mm. Yeah, I think it's... Um, yeah, Tinder is so popular. Mm. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that I find, yeah, um, I find like it's really strange because actually there's a lot of Japanese dating apps in Taiwan too. It's one one is called Park Tour, and and there are like some dating apps like specialized in helping Taiwanese to meet Japanese as well. I have to find a name for it because uh -huh. they all have. Mm. To. That's very specific. Mm, why is yeah, that? Yeah, it's why be is that? Very helpful. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's it's actually quite popular. Um, I don't remember the name. Let me check. I I know <laughs> it's like right away. Can... And I have a small question for Kay. Um, I wonder yeah. why you want to find uh, Taiwanese girls dating Japanese guys. Mm. Can it also be Taiwanese guy dating Japanese girl? Although, is there any particular meaning for this gender? Um, Can you see this? <laughs> what, what, is, what, what is it called? It's called pair. Pairs? Hi, I do. What? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we couldn't find this app in our Thai no. app store, I think. No. We cannot we cannot find, right? Yeah. Yeah, this like is only for. Yeah. yeah. Ah, interesting. It's good to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I can just find this send the link to you. It's called pairs. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. Yeah, for your 
question. Yes. What 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 do you found? I mean, because uh, the process of your research, you are, you want to do uh, you want to interview ten Taiwanese women dating Japanese guy, and I want to know if is it possible to be the other way around, like ten Taiwanese guy dating Japanese woman, or same sex couple. Mm -hmm. Is it also something you want to research? Mm -hmm. Mm, uh, for now, it's focused on Taiwanese woman, Taiwanese girl only. Mm, only, okay. Mm -hmm. But only, yeah. But mm, yeah, but I'm open for the other kind of relationship. Mm, because uh, yeah, I think it's sometimes. Yeah, I have to make it more focused on the um, because uh, the main idea of of the proposal. Okay. Yeah, the main idea of the project is like uh, um, I focus on. Uh, yeah, it's like. Japanese colonization in Asia. Mm. Mm. So, and I compare this kind of relationship to the love story. Mm. 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 Like uh, Japanese as, as, as a guy and the other country as a woman, something like that. So yeah, it sounds, how to say, it sounds like narrow, but <laughs> On the other hand, is deeply focused on specific relationship. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, what 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 do you think is should be expanded, or? Um, it can I be focused on this kind of relationship. No, because like uh, uh, for the examples. The, for example, the the movie that you just mentioned that Mama said I cannot, I should not marry mm. Japanese guy or the uh, mm. Cape Number Seven, um, they are all mm. part of this pop culture. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it means that uh, in this kind of movie, there are always some um, I think, uh, some value they want to sell you through this kind of movies, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so I'm also curious about uh, uh, why you choose all this um, pop culture on more like a um, movie for the from, um, capitalism or uh, as your mm. reference. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you also consider mm. like fictions, I mean, books or in different form? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, it can be, it's not only the uh, main, the mainstream film. Mainstream, mm -hmm. okay. It can be, it's not only the mainstream film. Okay. It's not only the film. Mm. Mm. It's, it can be independent film or art film, or it can be another kind of the media. Like uh, it can be a novel or a book mm -hmm. or the comic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it can be any media. Okay. Mm. It's not only the film. Mm. It can be advertisement or like TV series mm. Mm. that show this kind of relationship. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I think, mm, yeah, but what I selected as a reference is mostly is uh, mm. pop culture. Mm. Yeah. So, but on the on the other hand, 
if we can find something like um, or um, not the pop culture, like independent film or it's like a, something hidden or it's like rare media. I think it can be included. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Mm. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Well, my, my understanding of using pop movies, uh, like blockbuster movies is because maybe it's also sort of a sort of like propaganda trying to influence majorities mm. uh, like feelings and you know like their opinions towards mm -hmm. Japanese so um, yeah mm -hmm. so I, I think that really makes sense because um, yeah because like working in the arts uh, and when I was working with the film crew, I, I find I, I can really see that it's pretty hard. Like it's it's a it's a really challenging uh, job and takes a lot of a lot of planning and narrative as well and the the way of shooting and also presentation as well in order to influence majority of audience. Um, and mm -hmm. that's that's a, actually a very powerful tool and. So yeah, I find I find this uh, research on pop culture from artist perspective it's very interesting because um, because I feel like okay uh, I feel like independent movies brings out a lot of um, very good and hidden stories that's not usual and uh, it's very it's super beautiful but at the same time um, it's also it's also very valid to point out uh, what are the majorities are being manipulated uh, or being what kind of story they're hearing. Uh, I think it would be really nice to know as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, as as like so, you see the pop culture as a the propaganda. Mm, so I think. Yeah, we have to understand the pop culture and analyze this kind of culture that why why or how this media or this pop culture is controlling us or control yeah. our idea. So through the artwork, through my artwork is like to examine or to break the pop culture down. Mm, right. mm, 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 mm. Mm. So no, no, to, cri to criticize, I, I use the pop culture to criticize the pop culture itself. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now is it more challenging for you because, uh, because you know nowadays a lot of influencers are actually not work. They, they they were not pop culture like for for me sometimes uh for example before i can understand oh this is like a propaganda from the government um because uh the majority of the funding and you know the way to have these contents being available to the majorities are possible because of government support or you know like um uh businessmen like a business group supports but then like nowadays there are more and more influencers are you know they, they made themselves famous uh, through social media and then they enter the arena of um, pop culture and so so what's your do you have like a new take on this um, do you um, what do you think about this situation like do you think the influencers culture or like you know, like the self-made celebrities, self-made musicians um, being, you know, like they've been signed into like big company after they got famous. Uh, Justin Bieber is, is like one of the example actually. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, does that change? Uh, does, that, does that really uh, change the narrative 
of what kind of story we want the majority know or mm-hmm. uh, does that actually like I was wondering if the game rule changed because yeah I was trying to understand like whether or not it's the message is the message more important or the business model is more important in this part yeah so yeah I think mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. really interesting mm. yeah so so now if we look um, if we look at the pop culture that yeah is of course is totally related to the business um, so do you think like in the Taiwanese media that now do you think is you can see something like hidden relationship or mm. Mm, maybe difficult. You mean, to what answer. do you mean, hidden, hidden relationship uh, like between Japan and Taiwan or like the money? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, the, I, the, I want to uh, explain a bit why I asked you this question because uh, when I mm. first um, when you ask me, okay, Taiwanese women uh, dating or married Japanese guy, the first one who came to my mind is avocado sushi. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She is a, a famous journalist before she got married. And she married a Japanese guy and moved to Tokyo. And they have two. Uh, boy uh, after the marriage and in her blog is everything about his her complaint of his her, her husband like she complained about her Japanese husband so much on her blog and she really dislike Japanese culture so many things and she always complained that in her blog and her blog got so famous <laughs> and actually talking about <laughs> this international marriage I can find a lot of Taiwanese girl who marry a Japanese guy and they all complain about Japanese culture in their blog or on their <laughs> Facebook and also the movie that you show us today mama says I cannot marry a Japanese guy. It's the same idea. They are always like, complaining about Japanese culture. Yeah. Well, that's why um, I wanted to um, raise this question to you that do you, are you sure you want to use pop culture as a, a reference because the reality is quite anti the, the uh, yeah, mainstream yeah, yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I now got the idea that of like a using pop culture to criticize pop culture. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I see. I, I can really imagine like how much, how difficult it is for them to, you know, marry into another culture. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But the avocado sushi is a pen name. Avocado, avocado sushi. sushi. Yeah, it's a pen name. I can just now. Uh, give you the link mm. of her blog. And she also has a fan page in Facebook. Oh, okay, thank you. Is she still active? Yeah. She's still active. Yeah, quite pretty much active. She is now always in Tuan Go, Wang Hong, like huh? a um, YouTuber and Celebrity, internet wow. celebrity. Mm. And what's so funny is that after five years, they finally uh, gave up. Um, she moved back to Taiwan with her husband because she is so fed up with Japanese culture and Japanese society. <laughs> yeah. So she decided to just move back to Taiwan. Here, avocado sushi. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of bloggers I can show you. Mm-hmm. 
三角月。嗯，哦、oh, ，好，我看到了。诶，那 and there is another one. So many, right? 哦，好，好，那您是需要两条，两条。好，那我先稍微跟您讲一下，就是我们现在就是请您好做，所以。I think you can. I think you cannot really、uh, understand the text, but if you want to know, I can briefly translate some to you. They are basically just complaining their husband and so Japanese society because there are too many details living in Japan. Yeah.、Hmm. <laughs> okay, so but but what is the uh the response of the Taiwanese about her block is like is kind of the funny stories, right? Yeah, funny stories. Like,、uh, um, uh, the example of avocado sushi. She has a lot of. Fans, a housewife fan. So housewife fans will join her complaint and complain about their own husband. And then, <laughs> not Japanese, Taiwanese are also awful, and they are、uh, leave a lot of message at the、uh, huh? at her post. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. It's it's like to to express the feeling that she cannot. Say in the real life, yes, something like that. <laughs> Because、um, her husband cannot read Chinese, so she, uh, uh -huh. he cannot read her blog, and they communicate、mm, in English. She cannot speak Japanese too, even though she lives、mm -hmm. in Japan for so many years. Yeah, she cannot speak、mm -hmm. Japanese too. So.、Mm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. Yeah, it's a.、Um, yeah, it's a. Yeah, I will deep research more about this blog.、Oh. And if I have some question, I will ask for your help. <laughs> okay. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. I see. So. And moreover,、um, wow, it's really on that front. Yeah. Are you also research right now? Yeah,、uh, I continue. I try to to ask、uh, to to interview my friend or friend who is like get married with Japanese husband, but they seems like. Not,、um, how to say? It's like she feel like she she want more information from me. That what is my expectation? What is the goal of the research? So I think maybe this issue is is、uh, is sensitive. Is sensitive for、um, for her to、Another、talk about. Another reason is that because yes, and because you are a man.、Mm, no, mm, things mm, will、mm. be totally different if I want to marry.、Uh, I want to interview a housewife who married a Japanese guy. Yeah, so maybe you can. Yeah.、Uh, do you want to find <laughs> someone to do the interview for you? Do you think to find a girl to interview a girl would be easier for you? I think yeah, I think it's gonna be easier.、Mm. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we <laughs> help me. <laughs> <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I think yeah,、mm -hmm. there is some boundary, right? It's a gap between、yeah. me and the interviewee. <laughs> mm, to. <laughs> Not always expression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Lee, what, what, Lee, Lee what, what, what did you say? No, I said I love Zoe's expression because she just said like, yeah, like, of course, there are some boundaries. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, she, she, she didn't say it uh, directly, but I feel well, like that. I feel like mm, it's a boundary. Mm, it's a gap. Mm. So, so now I'm uh, writing some questions, the list of questions, and also the the contract. I, I mean, if 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 I would like to interview someone, there is some contract that okay, it's okay to use this information for the artwork or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think? What about you list down your questions and we try to send to our friends or the people that we know who married or who is dating Japanese guy? Okay. So that you don't have to in person interview them so, so they don't know that you are actually a man. Mm. Mm. So mm. That you can, you can. Yeah, I think it's a good. Yeah, you can send me the uh, question questionnaire, the list of questions mm -hmm. that you want to ask, and I can help translate them into Mandarin Chinese. Yeah, okay. and me as a housewife, I can send to my housewife friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's yeah. I think it's gonna be easier if uh, I don't need to interview face to face but mm. they can write they can write the answer so yes. i think and i can more, translate it's more easier to, yes yeah that will be mm, much mm, easier oh mm. uh, yeah yeah that's a good idea mm, mm. and also because some of my friends who married a japanese guy now right now living in japan Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. also easier mm -hmm. to just send them than really interview like through online meeting. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be the questionnaire, right? Questionnaire. Mm. We can use this word questionnaire. Right? Mm -hmm. Maybe at the beginning of this research, you can see how many questionnaire you can collect. And in between them, if you there are some particular case you really want to talk to them, then I can see if we can help to arrange. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yang Yi, do you also mm -hmm. have some friends dating Japanese guys? Yeah. Yeah, I have one, one friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> Japanese are uh, not too but, popular mm. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'm quite open. No. I'm quite open to to the Taiwanese woman who just wanted to have Japanese boyfriend. Uh, mm. or yeah, or who... just interested. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. I, I I just would like to know their attitude. Okay. Mm, mm. So it's quite open. Mm -hmm. Or people, it's no need to. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Maybe you think more about some of your friend that just interested or just plan to have Japanese boyfriend. Mm -hmm. This can be. Okay. But because of the influence of pop culture, I think now more Taiwanese girl wants to date Korean boys than Japanese boys. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> mm, mm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, kidding. yeah. If that that, but that is one of the point. Mm, I it could because uh, my assume is uh, the Japanese pop culture will be influenced on the attitude of the Taiwanese woman on Japanese guy. Yes. Mm, so the question for me. Is the what is the Japan uh, yeah Japanese media or Japanese pop culture influence on your attitude something like that? Yes. Mm. 
Yeah, that's why I, I think that now because like Korean pop culture is more dom dominant. So maybe yeah, yeah. this would be one of the factor that you might need to think about too. Uh -huh. Is it also very popular in Thailand, the K-pop culture? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are many waves, waves, waves of the Japanese pop culture in 90s and uh, in early 2000. Yeah, Korean pop culture is more dominant, mm. Mm. and now and now, I think yeah, the Korean pop culture is also still dominant, but uh, two years ago the the Japanese pop culture is come back again through mm. through the AKB 48 the yeah. famous two years ago yeah like 2018 we have the Japanese uh, Thai Thai group idol called BNK 48 which based on AKB48. So two years ago, it's, it's like, it's a big hit on the Thai culture. Mm -hmm. But now BNK48 is, is not so popular. Mm. Well, I'm curious, but, the main audience mm. of BNK48 mm. is Thai mm. audience or is Japanese audience? Uh, Thai, Thai audience. Okay. Because mm, mm, you've mm. mentioned the TPE48, because um, TPE48 yeah. has no Taiwanese audience. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why they didn't success. And now they mm -hmm. are part of AKB48, the TPE unit, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah. the people who enjoy this pop, like this kind of um, uh, friendly uh, neighborhood idol culture is still quite Japanese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. I think that's what I see from Taipei, from Taiwan. Yeah. TPE. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, like, I only heard of them. Like, I didn't even know they're like still existing. Oh, huh. interesting. They don't have stage. Mm -hmm. They don't have stage in Taipei mm -hmm. anymore. Mm. But do you know why the Taiwanese guy is not a big fan of the TPE for the? Um, because in, in Taiwan there's no such close fan culture. Like for example, for AKB48, they are famous for the theater culture that fans can uh, get to see their idol in really close distance. They can see them dancing on the stage and seven days a week, they have always performance in the evening and they have a theater in Akihabara. Yeah, but this is not the culture of pop idol in Taiwan. Like men, the mostly the celebrities and pop culture then the pop idols they were uh, spread by media like from you see them from tv you see them from youtube you see them from internet but they are not something that is so close to you mm, 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 mm. i see so i think in taiwan the oh. concert culture or the uh, theater performance culture of pop idols is not even that that popular. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you I agree, see. Miss Lee? Yeah. <laughs> Do, you agree? Do you agree? I think, yeah, I think that's definitely one reason. And also I think I think the problem is how they marketing the whole team though. Like I 
I think they did a market it very well. And also there's uh, um, like this, um, Actually, I think one of them is really famous, Lin Wei Jun. I, I think I saw that. I'm not sure if she is, um, she's still a star now, but yeah, just like it's, it's, a, it's a big group and it's hard to focus. And they also didn't really tell the good stories. They just kind of saying that, oh, Japan has like AKB 48. So we have like TPE 48. And, that somehow I like, didn't really stand out for them. And the song probably is not that catchy, but I, I really, with this group, I really um, have no impression at all. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 don't want, you think it's really hard? Yeah. And I want to mention one, one thing to Kay is that uh, the relationship mm -hmm. or the, um, the image of Taiwanese people to Japanese people is quite, uh, it's quite strange, also a bit intimate, because you see that after the fail of TPE 48 in Taipei, they can, a, a group of girls moved to Japan and joined AKB 48, right? But things didn't really happen mm -hmm. to BNK48 or to Shanghai48 or to Jakarta48. Mm -hmm. No, no Jakarta girls mm -hmm. in AKB right now, and no Bangkok girls in mm -hmm. AKB right now. Right? There's only mm -hmm. TPE yeah. girls. Yeah. So I think the mm -hmm. way uh, Japanese uh, audiences uh, accept the way they accept Taiwanese. Uh, girls is also a bit different from the rest of South Asian countries. Yeah, if we consider Taiwan mm. as one of Asian countries, then this is quite strange case. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is mm. that. Uh, this is something that makes me feel confused all the time too. Yeah, because they are more friendly yeah. to Taiwanese than to. Vietnamese or to Indonesians, yeah. Mm. I think this is yeah. also part of this colonial culture that so they feel friendly to Taiwan or something. Mm. So you think it's uh, the relationship is uh, special? Or more right, between... Mm, or at least not special, but more close. Mm. And this also, I think this is also because Taiwan is until now not a independent country yet. So we rely on uh -huh. those countries that can recognize Taiwan as Taiwan, not Taiwan as Republic of China. Yeah. But Zoe, do you think it's because of the color of the skin? Sometimes I, I feel like, do you think it's also possible because the color of the skin? Like, because. No, you know, like because Taiwanese there's also no yeah. Shanghai 48 in AKP groups. If yeah, you talk about, yeah, Jap yeah. yeah, if you talk about the color of skin, I mean, um, Korean culture is still quite. Um, uh, discriminated in Japan, in general, yeah, yeah. 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 Also Chinese yeah, yeah. culture, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, I I remember I read about that. Apparently, Japanese colonialization was so successful that they were called scientific colonialization. Like they think it's it's so good that they should be an example for other colonialized uh, colonialist country that. Japan has set an example where their colonies are like love them. So I, I felt like that's how um, that's, that's that's a, like, this is disgusting, right? <laughs> yeah, it's really disgusting. So so I feel like this kind of love from Japan to Taiwan is it's, uh, it's at the same time very condescending. Uh, yes. At the same time, maybe it's nice. I don't know. I think it's very condescending at times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can say that 
it's a kind of love. It is kind of love, like because you're very, you know, uh, it is kind of love in the way that you know you're such a great kid. You're so easy uh, to control. <laughs> so I love you. <laughs> I really like this kind of kids. You know, like always to listen to me, support of me, and um, you know, like give your own resources to me anytime. That's how I sometimes I can. I feel like I can read between the context. It's so, uh, yeah, but it's it's unpopular opinion. I have to say. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah, the question. Yeah, maybe like, what what is the love? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like at the same time, it's like it's like the worst lover possible because they are like. On one hand, they said, oh, they're always supporting Taiwan and stuff. Um, but on the other hand, for example, Japan Foundation uh, doesn't recognize Taiwan as a country. But, you know, like mm. they have a lot of different activities in the past year supporting Thailand and supporting mm. Indonesia. They were, uh, and also in Vietnam, they are expanding their influence through art and culture with yeah. Japan Foundation. But then like when Taiwan, like for example, there were a lot of, uh, Japanese curators that I know, they wanted to host exhibition in Taiwan um, by, you know, they looking for funds from Japan, Japan Foundation, they couldn't get one. So it's like, yeah, like, what does this love really mean? Like, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of, um, like, it's very convenient for Japanese, I feel, sometimes. <laughs> Tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it's um, so the love is can be yeah related to politics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not, it's not, um, yeah, it's not about the oh, oh, it's not only the feeling, but it's the relationship with sometimes it's business or politics. Um, um. Yeah, it so, is. Yeah. I, I'm curious, what about like Thai women to Japanese uh, men? Because I know in mm. Facebook, there's like a little Japan mm. area. And um, yeah. yeah, and then I, I heard it from my friends. Apparently like all the housewives uh, living in the little Japan has like a fair, like they have a gigolo. <laughs> Like when their husband mm -hmm. go out to work after after work, they all go to like they go to some like um, red light district to meet uh, or to drink and then to you know have uh, their mistress. And then during the day, the Japanese housewife have like um, gigolos or like boyfriends come and visit them. So yeah, I'm like I'm like curious about the situation. <laughs> Like what's the what's the story mm. here? Like what's the attitude towards Japan? Because Thai Thailand mm. it wasn't it wasn't invaded by Japan, but then like Japan builds your highway highway road, right? Like they build your highway and then create so much like job opportunities, setting up like car factories over there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but then like brings a, brings a lot of pollutions as well, of course, but. Um, so yeah, I want to, I wanted to know, like, what's the relationship there and what have you find in the, in the Thai cinema? Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like, mm, okay, from, from the World War II, uh, in the top, uh, uh, I, on the main history, we, we say that, uh, uh, we never colonized by Japan because of uh, we have a good relationship with Japan and Thailand. But in practical, it seems like we were colonized during the World War Two, mm -hmm. and the the most the most famous uh, 
media in Thailand that show relationship between Thailand and Japan is a famous novel that was that was the remake as as the TV series like during the I think during the Cold War mm. so the perception of the Thai people to understand what is happening during the World War II in Thailand is 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 the understanding through this novel mm. so the history between Thailand and Japan is presented through the fiction and mm -hmm. and some people cannot cannot like they don't know what is the fact the history fact and what is the fiction mm, yeah. because we, it's all mixed yeah mm, mm, mm. so at that point i think it's a good example to understand the relationship between Thailand and Japan. So as you say that in terms of the economics, in terms of the health, in terms of the education, we have a lot of the investment from Japan during the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, uh, we used to have the protests on the Japanese uh, product mm -mm. Mm, to against the Japanese culture because of the they invest uh, too much money and it seems like uh, during the Cold War we we also colonized by America mm -hmm. uh, American army base in mm. Thailand to against the communist mm. and we also have a uh, Japanese uh, culture during the Cold War so the protest the student protests the Japanese product and Japanese culture at that time so but after that the Japanese culture was become the pop culture in my generation mm. Mm, when I was young was is what presented through the media mm, mm, mm. like yeah Japanese cartoon or comics and uh, some TV series yeah. so it's kind of the soft power Japanese soft power and the the is which which is a kind of propaganda to to have a new attitude on the Japanese culture mm. Mm -hmm. or Japan mm, for the our generation mm. Mm. and that 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 is that is like influence on the new generation who was born after two thousand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, yeah it's our relationship with Japan is like more reconsider um, because of the the soft power through the media mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and for the Japanese, uh, for the Thai woman, I think they are, yeah, they have a good attitude to Japanese guy. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reason is, is, is uh, the Japanese media in our generation when 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 we were young mm. Mm, 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 mm. 
and a part of that uh, I think is it's like Japanese culture is a part of of our daily life. It's not only the media, but it's also the food, mm, mm -hmm. Japanese food. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like our culture and Japanese culture is blending together. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So there is no any mm, so much difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Yeah. Also, I also noticed when I was in Thailand, even though there's a lot of um, Chinese, um, well, Thai people has like Chinese ancestors, heritages. Um, but then like, it seems like Japanese culture is so much more popular and wide, widely adapted into Thai culture as well. And not only just in a traditional way, but also like in in the modern way, like you go everywhere, go to like shopping malls uh, or um, like fancy restaurants. There's always like a place of like Japanese culture for it. And yeah, so that's that's what I what I think is really interesting. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But in Taiwan, it's not like that, right? Right. Well, we, we do have a lot of like Japanese place. Yeah, but like that's be I I always think that's because we had, you know, like the colonialization history. And okay. Yeah, and then so like a lot of our government building was built by Japanese. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and was, like yeah, even like the way in some some part of the south where our um, you know those like water storage storages and you know like the one that goes into the farm to to uh, kind of water the land the system was like built by Japanese engineer so they did do a lot of infrastructure that was at the time very important to Taiwanese people and not to mention a lot of mountains um, uh, nowadays still like the furthest uh, the furthest uh, exploration point was made by Japanese. Uh, so you can see a lot of like statues of Japanese soldiers in the mountains as well. And uh, some sort of like all this like huge, like good generals that was here so that because of him, he opened up this like mountains for people. But then at the, but at the same time, they also kills a lot of uh, Aboriginal uh, Taiwanese mm. as well. Um, but that part of the history was never like, like severely talked about um, mm -hmm. until nowadays. So, so I, um, the well, the commercial culture is definitely very widely adapted here in Taiwan. But mm -hmm. I felt like that somehow different from Thailand is because we had the we had the East history of seeing Japan as someone who's some country that taking care of us. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I, I find the relationship is slightly different. Um, but at the same time, it's very worth to like, see like what's going on here and what, um, what these other countries, Thailand, Taiwan, um, Vietnam, uh, Philippines are going to response in the future as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, is it is it remind me to like um, it's like the advertisement from Japan product uh, Japanese product that show in our Thai media mm, it's, it's like Im imported the advertisement mm. yeah that yeah. that tran, um, translated to Thai language. Um, so do, do, do you have any like advertisement in Taiwan that 
show this kind of relationship? Do you think? Uh, yeah, like they directly, instead of using like the local actress, they always use like Japanese actress, like to translate, uh, you know, like she said, oh, for example. Um, and also other, I don't remember other, she said, oh, Kanebo, Jali Ba, I think, and also other brands. They all, um, they will still like keep the Japanese character very big and then and then have some sort of like Chinese character uh, describing uh, what does it mean to be beautiful and like you should be white and you know clean and like um, sincere and innocent. Um, your hair should look like really clean. And also like I, I started to grow really tired of Uniqlo. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I enjoy this. I enjoy this brand's uh, um, product, but then at the same time, they are also sending out this like messages of how like office lady should dress and can only dress in certain ways. Um, yeah, so so that's the impressions that I find out like, um, and also there's a lot of uh, Japanese magazine. Nowadays don't exist so much anymore. Um, yeah, so, so so definitely see the translation is sort also kind of a uh, power to to make us you know like absorb and also set us a standard of what japanese people think what is correct way to do makeup step by step and then what is mm -hmm. the correct way to dress for office and what is the correct way to interact with male and that's a uh, um, you can find that in Japanese magazine and, uh, and, and it's translated into Taiwan, uh, into Mandarin as well. So definitely can see the culture. And also very interesting is that almost all the Japanese translators or like the, the person I know who married into, uh, who marry a Japanese husband, they, instead of making their husband more Taiwanese style, they are becoming very Japanese style. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think that's uh, also really makes me strange as well, because I felt like uh, why is not, why it's, isn't your husband adapting to Taiwanese culture, but you adapting to uh, speaking the language and then, yeah, being very, very Japanese. Um, that's uh, that's something that I was wondering as well. Yeah, mm. but I just gave one example of avocado sushi mm, who but... hates Japanese culture. But in general, mm. um, what I want to mention through this uh, is that even though we are going to use uh, mainstream movies or pop culture as one of the reference, uh, still the reality of the relationships between Chinese and Japanese, are there are a lot of different layers. This is uh, what I uh, really want to mention. And uh, I think it's nice that through Today, when um, clarification, we get to know that uh, actually the um, ideology of um, the the Taiwan, um, the Taiwan Taiwan of Japan and Japanese Taiwan, the Taiwan in Japanese thinking, uh, okay, is quite different mm. than uh, mm -hmm. Taiwanese thinking of Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, we might have to bear in mind of these uh, differences when we are doing our research. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. also, yeah, I think we can start to spread a, a questionnaire or the list of questions to um, mm -hmm. um, Taiwanese who wants to date Japanese. Yeah. And to be honest, as um, cause I, I speak Japanese and I used to um, work. I did many residences program in Japan, in Japan and also work quite a little time in um, Japanese museum. So, mm. um, 
but I have to be honest that I never want to date Japanese guy. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> Why? Because they are so tidy. They are so <laughs> serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. Okay. And I am so afraid of that lifestyles full of details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ah. yeah. But I. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll support your project. I will spread your uh, questionnaire to as many friends as I have. <laughs> yeah. I also help too. Maybe I'll find some articles about like uh, Taiwan and like Japan. Um, cross culture re relationships. I think I can find something. But it's find useful something. to know that there is dating app only for Taiwanese and Japanese. That's quite a yeah, surprise. And there, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite popular. And then it's bought, I think it's bought by Singaporean like tech group. But then like, <laughs> that's, that's also another story. I feel like Singapore is also very obsessed with Japanese culture as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. yeah. So yeah. So yeah, you should definitely use the app. I feel like you should try. <laughs> mm. Mm. But the app, the app title is is the is a pass, pe pe right? Okay. Is that the only yeah. one? Yeah. Or there are more dating apps for Japanese and Taiwanese. I think I'm good. I can find something else. Um, yeah, that one is one of them because I saw a lot of them. Like they always like putting ads together. Like when I was researching about. Tenders. Is there also dating app between Thai and Taiwan? I did. I didn't see that. I think with Thai, I think only use okay. Tinder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're like they're like dating apps only dates like rich people <laughs> yeah and they're also like yeah so like the the status is the thing um you can choose okay a lot of or like dating apps with music lovers like people with same taste in music which i think is pretty cool um yeah Okay, so uh, later after our discussion, I will uh, send an email and put um, uh, Kay and Yan Yi in connect so that we can um, list down those apps or those things that we mentioned in the <laughs> during the discussion. Yeah. Also, if there is anything and, uh, else in mind, we can start to share through the uh, mailing group. Uh -huh. oh, but all, all, all the link we, that we share is going to be recorded, all the links in the chat, is it can be, because after, after the, we close the group, this link will be disappear or we can keep it. Oh, I'm not sure, but it's okay because I can also uh, record record them in the mailing group. Yeah, because I uh -huh. think I I sent most of them, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, you can. There's like a three dots on next to the file where you can save the chat. Oh yeah, save chat. Yeah, yeah. So then it's oh, uh -huh. you okay, okay. It and then you can save. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Thank otherwise, we will be on the link. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. Thank. Thank you, Lee, for a part of this uh, process. So uh, it takes a lot of time. No. No. no talking. Uh, no. Yeah. And thank you for sharing your uh, curatorial practice and uh, information. Mm. Yeah, thank you for listening. So it was yeah. a pleasure to listen to you and uh, know more about your project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Hey, we'll thank keep you. in touch. Yeah.
Yes, yeah, yes. and Yan Yi, so, if you have time, you're welcome to visit Hongga so that you can see Kay's work he uh, exhibited yeah, here yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the art, the artwork, uh, the video now is 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 also a relationship between uh, Thailand and Japan. Uh, the international or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the, Tiva, the Taiwan International Video Tiva. Art, yeah, exhibition. Mm. Cool, cool. cool. Okay. But but it's shot it's shot by film, six sixteen millimeters film. Nice, cool, mm. very cool. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. yeah, you'll right. see. Yeah, yeah, when I go, I, was... I will tell you. <laughs> okay, I'll see you okay. guys around. So, so when the uh, the next meeting is gone. Uh, I, I I mean the the meeting for for the big group is on twenty seven. Yeah, next Friday, right? We we we're going to have right. the group meeting of this next whole Friday. whole project, whole exchange project on next Friday. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So mm -hmm. okay, yay. okay. I will prepare for that. Thanks again. Yeah. Thank you. ขอบคุณครับขอบคุณครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ see you see you